So number one um, thing I want to talk about is this amazing, really good um, profile, probably better than a GQ profile because it speaks, you know, it comes from a journalist point of view. She's somebody that's obviously a fan of Virgil, but also is asking some poignant questions and not just, you know, one of his friends from the GQ thing. It's the GQ thing is still good, don't get me wrong, but this is more of a, a, a probably a better piece overall. But there's a great article on Virgil Abloh. Again, I always fucking mention him as podcast from Virgil. Virgil's like my Jay-Z from the Joe Budden podcast. I always mention it. Probably there's a bingo being done if I was more popular <laughs> um, regarding who I'd comment on. But there's this great article um, that Virgil did um, or a great interview he did um, with uh, the New Yorker magazine. Um, and it's written by the journalist called Doreen St. Felix. And it's a pretty, pretty good article. Um, number one, it's great because it's a long form article and um, where it kind of... Um, he talks about, you know, the inspiration about the brand, his kind of story so far. And it's also one of those weird articles that has like um, the audio portion of it. So they've had a narrator kind of basically narrate the entire article. So you can listen to it in the background, which is something that I've, I've seen I've seen a couple of times on Medium. And I think it's a really, really cool feature. I hope more, more sites do it overall. But the really poignant thing that I thought was interesting was his impression of Diet Prada, right? And it's something that I've been thinking, I thought of it a while, right? It's something I've been kind of thinking and ruminating on myself, but I haven't necessarily said out loud. And I'm glad he kind of um, said it. Um, again, this is putting aside whatever opinion I might have a virtual of him personally. You know, I have my issues with some of the stuff that he's done in the past, but I still think by and large, he's done more, more bad than good. And I just think in general, as being the kind of torchbearer and the person that's going first, the person that's kind of bolted through the gates, he's going to kind of usher in a whole wave of amazing creatives, um, the next generation to come. Kids are seeing him and looking at him as a new Ralph Lauren. It's, you can only imagine what we're going to get on the back end coming out of it, right? If we're saying that he's not the most quote what talent designer has come through but he's achieved the success that he has done imagine when you get somebody that's able to marry his marketing skills with actual technical skills and is able to be a cultural savant it's going to be fucking over right these, these kids coming up are going to be fucking amazing they're going to be fucking awesome and it's all thanks to him right he's the first one through and he's paving the way but i've had a bit of an issue by and large with the narrative that revolves around his plagiarism and the fact that he's copying designs right because i think nowadays especially nowadays especially with the fact that you know there isn't for for maybe apart from maybe five designers there aren't that many really high caliber um pushing the envelope uh breaking molds uh really 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 fashion fashion with a capital f designers out there for the most part everyone is a a, a glorified creative director who has a penchant for fashion and they're kind of you know trying to traverse those um rocky waters and trying to deliver a final product that kind of speaks to the masses for the most part right and with that being the case, it's more obvious and, and also with the fact that, you know, it's hard to really come up with original, original ideas in clothing. You know, most things have been done under the sun. It isn't without realm, out of the realm of possibilities for an art a designer, a creator to go into the archives, look through the rich history in fashion, pluck a reference out from nowhere and try and reinterpret it and repurpose it for the environment that we're living in nowadays. That's perfectly fine. I don't have any picture with that, whatever, right? It's not like um, the sneaker industry that's, in, you know, fundamentally it's rested on a bedrock of retros right where if for instance if nike didn't have the air max range that they still try and pump they still try and pump people out with air max and air max ones and that's the same sort of thing where would the company be nowadays right most people still wear retros and they continually keep making the same shit sneakers because they don't have any backbone they don't have any insight or foresight they keep fucking swallowing up the same bullshit it's not like that at all right fashion is a bit different but even with that being said there is Every designer under the sun is referencing someone, right? Everyone's taking references. Everyone's trying to, you know, take things from the old days and from the archives and try and reinterpret it and give it back to the modern consumer that we have nowadays, right? That's all well and good. But why does it always seem to be an issue whenever Virgil does it? It seems to be more venom attached to him whenever he references something of old. And if anything, doesn't it help his case? Because some of these critics that are out there saying that he references too much and he copies and he plagiarizes are the same people that said in the beginning. Because I remember this. I fucking remember. When Virgil and Kanye were first going to fashion shows, they were getting accused of not being actual fashion enthusiasts. They didn't actually know. They didn't have the knowledge story. Well, I, I remember precisely when Kanye debuted his collection, at, um, his first collection um, at Paris Fashion Week. I remember, it might have been Kathy Horn or somebody saying along the lines of like uh, during the review or writing in a review that just because you're a, just because you're a fan of fashion doesn't make you should doesn't mean you should make it like what the fuck are you talking about that is essentially why you should make it that is a whole reason why you should make it that's that's essentially why the industry is where it is right um kids 
um, boys and girls all over the world, infatuated fashion, are intrigued about how things are put together, decide, oh, I like that, I'm going to try that. Now, through the process of doing it, you figure out if you're good or not. The market obviously kind of tells you if you're good or not, whether they want to buy it. But by and large, everyone's interest in this industry has come from that um, first kind of like twinge at your heart when you see something beautiful you see an amazing gown you see a well-crafted suit you see whatever you see online you see something that really catches your attention you're like wow and you dig a bit deeper and then you dig deeper and you find out oh this is how it's made a human makes this cool i'm a human too you start to find out how they went about making it then you start working backwards oh they went to university or they this all they kind of went on this online course whatever it may be you figure out how to do it yourself because you're so passionate about it that's why we all do it but i remember there's very you know um condescend condescending remark made about them right they, they didn't have the knowledge cool okay they didn't have the knowledge back then they have the knowledge now they get the knowledge right you have the access to the internet and um, they have the they have the uh they have the resources they have the um the money that they have you no know, yeah they have the resources and they have the capability to travel around the world to get an internship at fendi to attend fashion show after fashion show after fashion show, probably without an invite just like bum rush the, the places right they have the ability to kind of really speed up their learning process and they do it they soak up all the knowledge like a sponge, like, you know, you can say what you want to say about Kanye and Virgil, but one thing is that they are supreme culture savants. They're able to kind of tap into what's going on in a current site, guys, and boom, give you a product, right? Cool. It's no coincidence that Virgil's tens were successful. It's no coincidence that he makes that fucking belt that I wear all the time. That was fucking amazing, right? R right on cue. When stuff's happening, boom, you jump on it and you're, you, sorry, not jump on it, you start the wave, right? So they're amazing at doing that. Maybe technical skills are not where they could be, but give them time. Give them fucking time time it takes time to get better at these sort of things cool but a little bit of twinge didn't make sense to me i didn't like it but again we've got the internet now so you know the consumers are always the ones that are making the final decisions right the consumers decide that they like virgil they like what he does they buy his thing um, his brand gets successful he opens stores he gets hired as a louis vuitton director so essentially the criticism that he's getting from the critics is null and void because at the end of the day you're making it for the end consumer right you have to marry um, art and commerce he's been able to marry it perfectly but then the kind of criticism he gets, especially from Diet Prada, really leaves a sour taste in my mouth because I said it before previously to people, my close friends, but I've never really been the biggest fan of Diet Prada, even in the beginning when everyone was like kind of like, lauding them. Number one, because if anything, it was just a reminder. It was just another reintegration, even though the people behind it are fairly young. It was just another way of the industry somehow getting, um, somehow um, reintroducing gatekeepers. That's essentially what it was, right? Because essentially it feels like for the most part, Whatever they, whatever the things that they're calling out online on their kind of social media on their Instagram feed, for the most part, it feels like they're trying to cancel the brands. It doesn't feel like they're trying to act as a reference board or as some sort of um, archival index. It just feels like they're trying to cancel the brand that has dared to go into the archives, that's dared to go on the first view, that's dared to scour through Vogue runway, that's dared to buy vintage magazines and reference a brand. They're trying to kill that brand that's decided to pull a an obscure Mugler reference that no one was thinking about and reintroduce it nowadays to new customers, they get really annoyed by it and they want to cancel that brand. And I don't really get how constructive that is. At the end of the day, showing the like the side-by-side the -side images of these brands and what reference they take is cool because the kid that goes out or the girl that goes out and buys that um, Celine copy from Zara is then maybe going to see that reference and maybe dig in deep, right? It only it only helps the industry overall because it introduces these people into these more quote unquote Larry or challenging designs or more some more avant-garde pieces. They only kind of piques their curiosity. And for the people that don't aren't piqued by their curiosity, you are never going to make them a fan anyway. It's no it's no issue. So I never really got the vindictive sort of like nasty mean spirited nature of it. Now that being said, it's fashion. You know, by and large, there is a bit of a cynical edge to it. I think for the most part, people want to love to hate on something they're never really pleased with anything and for the most part the people that are commentating offer no solutions don't actually put their neck on the line aren't necessarily don't necessarily have any skin in the game and kind of um get satisfaction from knowing everything but not doing anything with that knowledge which is fine it happens a lot in streetwear as well but i've always had a bit of a a bit of a funny feeling when it comes to diet pride like they, they, they're just trying to cancel brands they're not trying to inform or help trying to you know provide references just like oh look you copied you copied that brand what that we love we're going to cancel you like you can definitely see the favoritism in the brands that they like and they don't like and again it is what it is they've done some good things with the whole dolce gabbana shit but for the most part it feels like they're just trying to cancel the brands out there and it just feels a little bit weird and virgil spoke about it right so um the, the the article says this on the following this is a new new yorker article right um titled virgil abloh uh, menzo's biggest star so it goes as follows 
um, Instagram, the Instagram account Diet Prada, which is run by fashion analyst um, Tony Liu and Lindsay Schuler, called out the similarities between Virgil's chair and Mr. Emmett Cobb's. It also compared Virgil Abloh's t-shirt with Ab- the off-white t-shirt with Abloh's 2016 collection to a poster of AJ Fronzi, which used an identical font design. In January, it posted a, 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 a daptic of two extremely similar outfits, both yolk yellow and featuring Jagged Tex, right? The one with graffiti that's that um, small brand, I think in Paris, was calling him out on online. The first was made last year by a relatively unknown indie label, Colors, and the second from a Pacific um, from public television this did not seem like a homage shortly after Passion Prayer Fashion Week I met with um, Virgil uh, for the first time at a Soho house in Chicago when I mentioned the post to him he took the opportunity to praise Diet Prada's editorial project again this is somebody that's supremely positive again for the amount of stick he gets online right again I think a lot of it is his own fault I think that Ralph Lauren shirt that $500 Ralph Lauren shirt really fucked up his reputation. I think in general, I think people didn't mind Virgil. Even he came across sometimes a bit condescending in the beginning and he kind of very quickly changed how he comparted him into how he um, conducts himself online. He was all about the kids and shit. He promoted people and gave people platforms and gave people opportunities. I think that Ralph Lauren polo shit, shirt, because I don't know for me, it really wrangled me when I saw that pricing $500 of it, right? I think that really rubbed people up the wrong way. But by and large, apart from that, he's done nothing else really to piss people off really, has he? To know people again if you don't know him personally i don't necessarily see what the bad vibe is when it comes to virgil but again that that is neither here or there they don't want to get into the whole racial connotations of it but again we will speak about that another time um when i mentioned it to him and we took the opportunity to praise that prize editorial project right even though they're slating him, we still praise them all props to them that's a great concept but he added that the account didn't take into consideration that consu- that coincidences can happen now again, I don't, I don't assume it's a coincidence. Sometimes you can get a reference, but you're allowed to reference shit. It's fashion. What the fuck is wrong with you? Everyone can reference. And um, he said that he had never seen the colors look when he designed his yellow ensemble. The allegation was founded on um, basically the use of yellow fabric with a pattern on it, which is very true. Ring the alarm, he sighed. I could go on for about a whole hour about the human condition and the magnet that is negativity. That's why the world is actually the way it is. Uh, that's why good doesn't prevail because there's more negative ev- energy. You can't create more connective tissue around the idea that is a, that is plagiarized. Uh, you can create it. Okay, they plagiarize. It's better you just sit and point your finger. That's what social media can be. All that space to comment breeds a tendency to fester ver- versus actually making something. He went on. It allows you to package up this. You're not a designer. Close a book because designers should be from Belgium, which again goes back to the whole racial connotation thing, which again, I think is something that's very afoot here at the moment. Because I think about some of the criticism I see um, Samuel Ross get on show studio and I think to myself if Samuel Ross was from Kingsington and went to Westminster College and fa- studied fashion there right and was known around the circuit for interning at ID magazine would he get the amount of hate that he gets on show studio panel right the social the show studio staff um, some of the panelists that go in there apart from um, Mima who does a good job of defending him and really talking about the you know the the amazing commerce that his brand does the fact that he's able to sell things the fact that he's got investment because people see the value in the product that he's making the fact that he's got collaborations coming out of his ass the fact that he's got his own consultative thing that he's doing under his own name like she's the one to praise him but for the most part there's a lot of ill will around um, Sammy Ross someone again a self-taught designer right they didn't go to school to study fashion design and look how much he's killing it and again I just think there's a little bit of um, uh, bad vibes with, when it comes to these guys. Number one, because they're self-taught, and I think for the most part, especially in London or especially in the fashion industry, most people still are uh, the fashion industry or the fashion education industry is a lot like the record label stuff, right? Um, they're still hoodwinked by the thing of going to CSM, right? Of going to Parsons, it's still a thing in their head. So when they go to these places and they don't necessarily get the job that they want or their brand doesn't kick off the way they want it to, and they've got done the education, right? They've done the schooling, they've worked underneath. Uh, a well-known tutor or they've been working in, or, they've, or they've enrolled in a course that's worldwide known, it must really bug you and really kind of leave a sour taste in your stu- in, in your mouth or a really bad feeling in the pit of your stomach when somebody has self-taught, somebody has been screen printed t-shirts, right, um, f- for as tour merch, suddenly then um, has their own ready-to-wear collection, right, and then decides to, and then gets hired to be the um, fashion director of the men's wear division at Louis Vuitton. I can understand why that first a bad ill or ill will. But what I would say nowadays, what you do have with the benefit of a, of this smartphone in your hand is that you can do the same thing, right? You can provide yourself with your own platform. You can um, uh, you can kind of amplify your voice out there. You can understand the the, the what the intricacies that go behind marketing and getting your voice out there. Because, like I said, you just it's the days of just being the. Um, 
the singular creative at home um painstakingly making patterns cutting fabric stitching putting stuff together and just selling it online with no promotion no marketing no um foresight no guerrilla marketing no influence of marketing uh no uh, whatever it may be called is over you have to be able you have to be all encompassing or if you're not all encompassing get people in that can help you do that and if somebody is able to do that and hack the system and somehow leap forward and kind of get the opportunities that you're meant to quote and get get you think you deserve you get you or think you deserve that you should have you can't hate the person right you have to maybe look in the mirror and see what you're doing wrong and i think sometimes again i just think by and large if virgil was wasn't the way if he didn't look the way he looked and he came from somewhere else and he maybe came from a traditional fashion industry background i don't think people would care as much they wouldn't have that much of an issue with him and again like i said i just don't i really have a bad i really don't like diet prada in the same way it really ang or really wrangles me when i hear or read articles from eugene rabkin and he's talking and he's like you know flowing throwing subbies at streetwear and talking about you know a return to tailoring and all this sort of stuff again it's just coded language to ensure that the gatekeepers um are reinstated and the amateurs or the people that are doing it diy style are kept on the outside that's what they want but essentially the, the amateurs, the DIYers, people from the streetwear scene, people like myself, we're the ones that are giving those people juice, right? I'm not even a, I'm not even a, a creator or a contributor within that fashion industry realm, right? But I take a lot of pride in the fact that these guys have come from our little scene and are fucking taking over the entire place, right? They're standing around during LVMH Prize and just, you know, contributing their little two pences. I know for some of these fashion intern people, it's really pissing them off. But what the fuck are you doing interning at ID? It's a waste of time, right? ID, you've got ID Magazine is your Instagram. You can make your own ID Magazine on your own Instagram. You don't need to intern at ID. You don't need to go and beg and plead to uh, be the runner at America Transit or whatever it may be called. You can just do it on your own. That's how these most people have done it for the most part. And then they've gotten the attention of all the bigwigs from the fashion industry. Because again, if we say, if we look, if we take, if we take the knowledge of fashion to be the precursor to who's allowed to come in, Who's got more knowledge than the LVMH conglomerate, right? Who has the actual knowledge of the industry? Who's kind of gone through all the ebbs and flows? And then they've picked out Virgil as the person to lead the Louis Vuitton men's. They've obviously know something, right? They obviously got something, right? It's not an accident, right? It's not, they didn't go based on his fucking followers on Instagram. There was obviously a reason to it. There was obviously a, a, a long-term project in mind. And he's obviously been given the opportunity to do it. So why not do it and amplify your voice and try to, you know, bring your vision up to that really heady heady height no pun intended but sometimes honestly like that diet prada page again like i said it just feels like they're just trying to cancel brands as opposed to really inform or as opposed to become a reference point people say it's just it's just like, oh you dare to copy from raf simmons you're cancelled it's like what the fuck what do you want it's raf simmons where he's the fucking goat can i not reference the goat like what the hell's going on here and look at your goat look at your goat right he goes to Calvin Klein, right? He makes a couple of good pieces, a couple of good jackets, a couple of good shoes, and look what happens. Look what happens to fucking Calvin Klein. Now they're flipping, stopping, they're, they're, they're going to stop presenting at fashion shows. Loads of people are getting let go. Like, <laughs> look, what your, look what your God did. Look, look what he did. 